For surface area to volume, we denote it by having the surface area on the left side and the volume on the right side. And if we have an example, let's say 5 to 1, it's important to always note that the first number, 5, is always going to correspond to surface area, and the one's always going to correspond to volume. So you have to make sure you put these in the right order. Now when we calculate the surface area, we multiply the one side length by the next side length times 6, because 6 is going to represent all the faces. So that's how we would do it if we have a cube. So let's say this is the length, this is the width, and this is the height of our cube. And let's say the length, the height, and the width are all equal to each other since this is a perfect cube. So all we have to do is we have to multiply the length times the height, or we can do height times width, or we can do length times width, and then we multiply that by 6. Because all of these, length times height, height times width, and length times width, all are equal to each other, so they should all have a face of the cube that are all of the same surface area. And since this cube has six faces, that's going to give us the total surface area. However, if we have a cube or a rectangle with different dimensions or different side lengths, so let's say this is 2, let's say this is 2, and this is 1, what we have to do is we have to figure out how many different faces there are of the different lengths and add them up together. So for example, we know that there's going to be two faces that are 2 by 2. So that's going to be 2 times 2 because this whole face is going to be or is going to have an area of 4 and then we're going to multiply that by 2 since there's two of these faces to give us a total surface area of 8 and then we're going to have four of these faces that are 2 by 1 because these are two faces and then there's going to be two more right over here. So we're going to do 2 times 1 times 4 for the four faces to give us 8 and that way our total surface area for this rectangular cube is going to be equal to 8 plus 8 which is a total of 16. And to calculate for the volume all you have to simply do is multiply the length times the width times the height. So in this case since we have 2 by 2 by 1 it would be 2 times 2 times 1 to give us a volume of 4 units cubed. So why is it important to have a good surface area to volume ratio? It's because we So why do we need to know surface area to volume ratios? It's because it's important for cell sizes. And what we want is we want a high surface area to a low volume ratio. So we want the surface area to be as big as possible compared to the volume. And the reasons for this is because we want more surface area in our cells so that way we can diffuse more nutrients into the cell and more waste out of the cell. Because if not enough nutrients get into the cell at the right time, then the cell cannot grow. And if there's too much waste building up in the cell, then it becomes sick. So once again, the best surface area to volume ratios in cells are the ones where the surface areas are really high compared to the volume. And here we can figure out the surface area to volume ratios for all of these cells and we can decide which cell size is the best. So now, by looking at these different cell sizes, we're going to figure out which one has the best surface area to volume ratio and which would be the best size for a cell. So when we calculate it out, we find out that this cell has a surface area of 6 units squared and a volume of 1 units cubed. So then we get a surface area to volume ratio of 6 to 1. And this is a very good surface area to volume ratio for a cell because it has a very high surface area compared to the volume. Next, for this cell, we find a surface area of 16 units cubed, and we find a volume of 4 units, of 16 units squared, and we find a volume of 4 units cubed. So then we get a surface area to volume ratio of 16 to 4, which can be simplified to 4 to 1. So it's not as high as we have it here for this cell, but it's still relatively high. And finally, for this last cell, we get a surface area of 24, 24 units squared and a volume of and a volume of 8 units cubed. So then our surface area to volume ratio here is going to be 24 to 8, which becomes simplified to 3 to 1. So therefore, this has the lowest surface area to volume ratio. So now we know that all of these cell sizes the 1 by 1 by 1 cell has the best surface area to volume ratio, and this is why all of our cells are much smaller rather than larger.